kind of feel like Brian Gumble here on Real Sports when he always has a drink. Uh, here's my Yeti, by the way, brought to you by the Sleep Station. That's our road trip here in Miami, and this is TechSag's Rewind, which is presented by Yeti. So, hey, everybody, what a great show we had today. OB was on a lot. We had a good time talking to OB. Our, our first guest was Katie George, ESPN sideline reporter. She'll be on the sidelines for AM versus Miami. Great conversation with Hill, with her. And speaking of the Hill, Rendell, the Thrill Hill, was on the program. Miami wide receiver from back in the day in the 90s, won a couple of championships. He's a special agent. That was a great conversation breaking down the U. We did a round college football with Aaron Torres, and that was Phenoms and Billy Lucci. He joined us. There was a little technical gaffe in there because my headphones stopped working for some reason, but Billy just kept on going like the pro that he is. It is Texas Rewind on the road from Miami. Thanks to the Sleep Station, and thank you to Yeti. Check it out. That was a terrible segue to get to check it out hey uh, so we felt last year this team was an offense away from being a real contender and that's why when the five and seven jump to maybe a 10 win season isn't that far fledged when you saw that offense just the presentation not just the talent because there was talent last year as well uh, mm -hmm. what is something that jumped out to you uh that bobby petrino is uh alive and well and as somebody who played volleyball at the University of Louisville when he came back for his second stint and then got into local news and covered his seasons with Lamar Jackson. Um, he is an incredible offensive mind. I feel like he has nine lives in college football. He just keeps coming back for more. And I'm, I'm really curious. We're meeting with, with he and Jimbo, obviously, and DJ Durkin later this afternoon. I'm just curious to see, you know, kind of the give and take that they have as play callers. Obviously, Jimbo is one of the greatest offensive minds in, in college football as well. And so when you have those two minds blending together, I think you can have a great product. Certainly it was evident um, in, in what we saw against New Mexico, but I'm, I'm excited to see coach Petrino again, because I think that he does a great job putting his quarterback in situations to succeed, especially when you have the talented skill players around him. And certainly this roster presents that. So do you have any thoughts on what it's going to take for uh, you know, like a main key for, a and M to win and for um, Miami to win. I'm trying to remember the the game from a year ago. Gosh, it just it feels like it was a forgettable game, right? It, it didn't. Yeah, it, was. it wasn't as entertaining, <laughs> and it didn't live up to the hype offensively as we all hoped as as football fans. Uh, I think for Texas A and M, um, you have to play clean football, right? Like we saw so many. Um, miscues and mistakes week one from from top level teams I think if you play clean football you don't cough the ball up um, I think that you know in theory on paper this game should be favored to Texas A&M just purely based on the talent can you put it together play clean football Randall what do you think is the positional matchup that intrigues you the most what is the one the key in this game there um well it, I hate to say this because I'm a wide receiver however um Everything starts and stops in the middle. It always will. It always has. I, I don't care uh, from the NFL to, you know, you know, Patrick Mahomes or, you know, Kansas City Chiefs or the Philadelphia Eagles. It always starts and stops in the middle. They don't get enough praise. Um, they, don't, they don't get enough um, glory. But if Texas can handle – I'm sorry. If, if Texas A&M can handle the front, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be problems for Miami. It, it is what it is. If Miami can handle the front, there's going to be problems for uh, Texas a and m You control the line. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, and then everything else falls falls by the side. Again, like I said, you know, the, the, the wide receivers such as myself, yeah, you're going to see us dancing in the end zone. We're going to be running through cones. We're going to be having fun. But it doesn't get started until the O-line and D-line starts Talking to Randall Hill here on Texas Radio. Randall, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit oh, about the oh, a &M. one other thing. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Of so, a game like this, I learned this from from Jimmy Johnson and anybody who's a um, don't be a fan when you're when you're talking to me or if you're listening to me, don't be a fan of the game. Be a student of the game. I learned this from Jimmy Johnson In games like this. The intangibles are also extremely, extremely important. What do I mean by intangibles. OK, one of the intangibles that Miami already has uh, where, where they're going to be playing. The second intangible is the field position and special teams. No one really talks about special teams, but special teams can, can win and or lose a game for you, regardless of how well you do on offense or, or, or defense. So this, this is going to be a hype game. This is going to be a nationally televised game and the fans are going to be rocking. Everyone's going to, you know, Texas A&M, they're going to, they're going to bring down their fans. 
But you know what? The intangibles are what are going to, I guess, I guess tip the scales. I guarantee you in this particular game. Yeah, and, I, and I'm with you that they definitely, if, if it's the right coach and maybe it's crystal ball, maybe it isn't, that maybe that, that they can get back. I think when I was talking about Mystique, like I, I don't think when AM's players got their schedule this fall or this summer, excuse me, like they had Miami circled on the schedule the way you would have 15, 20 years ago. Like the games that matter to kids at AM are you know LSU and, and and Alabama and whatever but to to the game itself David what you said to to lead I believe is correct is I believe there is more talent in that AM locker room that's not a reflection of Mar- uh, Mario Cristobal it's just the fact that he's in year two of his process whereas Jimbo Fisher is in year six um and listen you know we can go back to all the stuff we talked about since December with this AM team about um you know the close losses uh, you know the schedule probably you know the the win loss record probably isn't reflective of what that team was last year but on the other side you are what your record says you are and so i was very um what's the right word i'm impressed isn't the right word but 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 happy to see the, that the offense, you know, delivered in week one against New Mexico, I think that is a reflection of kind of a change of philosophy and a change in, in, in whatever, more so than it's just that it was a totally inferior opponent. But at the same time, you have a national stage this weekend, you're on the road, you're playing a team that, to your point, has, a, you know, a national cachet. Now go on and prove it. You know, is, is it really Bobby Petrino? Is this really different? Or was it just New Mexico last week? I think we're going to start to get some answers about 3.30 Eastern tomorrow. What about that a and offense? Um, look, it was just New Mexico, but there was something about it. Do you think that offense, and not 52 points, but how sustainable do you think this talent with Bobby Petrino holding the keys to the car uh, is that offense? I mean, I think it's really sustainable. I mean, I just, I, I, I think that, like, the talent is there. It's just, it, you know, and, and Petrino said it all off season, and it's cliche, and it's obvious but it's about putting your best players in position to succeed. Billy, let's talk about winning on the road. It's uh, it's, it's something that has to get done. It's been a minute, um, and, and I think really important they, they get to an early lead and, and control the tempo early in this one because uh, it has been so long uh, winning on the road. Look, it's going to be four-quarter fight. I, I, you'd love to start fast. Um, it's just what what happens over 60 minutes. This is going to be, I don't call it a heavyweight fight just yet. We'll reserve that for some of these uh, bigger games against better teams early on or later on. But this is, like I said, it's a great litmus test. You're going to have to play for 60 minutes. It's not going to be nothing. I don't think anything's going to come easy. There's a world in my head where I picture this offense. Like, if, if this offense – with Bobby Petrino, if Wigman's that dude and the receiver, the receivers that dude, you know, if Connor's that guy. You've got those receivers. You've got an offensive line returning five starters. Uh, there's a world where you give that to Bobby Petrino, and AM could have one of the better offenses in the country. If that's the case, we're going to see it. There's no reason why we might not see it tomorrow, but. It doesn't guarantee it. That could be something that happens as the season wears on. Uh, And I think in game two on the road, a real test for the first time, these games typically are close. And it doesn't matter what they get by. This would be a massive win for the program, for Jimbo. Uh, I don't care if Miami finishes 10 and two or if they finish, you know, seven and five. This would be a huge win tomorrow at that point in time for AM, not just to win that game, but also to also to kind of, you know, just set the tone for the rest of September. We've talked about this is a very important September. And you talk about winning a road game. And the last time they won away from home, that was really significant. Uh, it was and maybe anywhere, right? Like where where have they won since 2020? I'm trying to. They won at Missouri. Okay, at Mizzou, and, and they won it. They won. Uh, they went at Auburn. No, that was twenty twenty. Follow so, All right, so we're growing that YouTube page. Thanks to everybody who keeps uh, subscribing and liking. Keep those numbers up. We're trying to get to eleven thousand. Hopefully, by the time the game starts, we're getting closer and closer. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Monday post game show. All that good stuff as well on Saturday. See you then.